In Ephesians chapter 5, we learn that Christ loved the church so much that he gave his life for us in order to make us holy and clean. And we're also taught how this takes place in our lives where it says that we are washed by the cleansing of God's word. The word of God brings about a, a cleansing and what it calls sanctification to our lives. Now I know sanctification sounds like an old word, typically only used by pastors, but it actually outlines for us an important principle in the Christian faith. Simply put, it means for us to be set apart from sin, to be separated from sin, or to be purified of our sins. It kind of puts me in the mind of a water purification process. If you have water that perhaps contains debris, it's murky, it's whatever, for that to be made clean, it is first passed through a filter, and that filter removes the debris before it goes through a chemical process, usually being passed through some sort of charcoal, something that will actually purify and eliminate any other dangerous microbes in the water itself. But in order for water to be acceptable for drinking, you really want both. You want both the purification, but also the removal of any debris. In a similar way, while cleansing and sanctification are closely linked together, they are not identical. But every believer needs to experience both. Consider it this way. Even before Christ's atoning death upon the cross actually took place, he had already assured his disciples of the cleansing power of his word that he had spoken to them. Listen to what he says in John chapter 15, verse 3. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Here we see that the word of God is the divine agent for spiritual cleaning. But side by side with the word, we must also understand the other great agent for spiritual cleaning as referred to by the Apostle John. 1 John chapter 1, verse 7 says this, But if we are living in the light as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. Here John speaks of the cleansing power of Christ's blood shed for us upon the cross to redeem us from sin. God's provision for spiritual cleaning always included these two divine agents, the blood of Christ shed upon the cross and the washing of the water by his word. Neither is complete without the other. Christ's redemption by his blood comes to us through his great sacrifice so that he may cleanse us and sanctify us by his word. John places these two great operations of Christ in closest connection with each other. Look at what he says later in 1 John chapter 5 as he speaks about Christ. This is he who came by water and blood. Jesus Christ, not only by water, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who bears witness because the Spirit is truth. John is declaring that Christ is not only the great teacher who came to tell mankind of God's truth, but he is also the great Savior who shed his blood to redeem people from their sin. In each case, the Holy Spirit bears witness. Another translation says he gives testimony to Christ's work in this way. The Holy Spirit tells the truth and the authority of Christ and the power of his blood in a very special way, both by his activity and guidance in our lives, but also through the very word of God, that great literary work that the Holy Spirit himself inspired. John teaches us that we must never separate these two aspects of Christ's work. We must never separate the teacher from the Savior, nor the Savior from the teacher. It is not enough to accept Christ's teaching as outlined in the Bible, but we too must accept and experience the power of his blood to redeem and cleanse us from our sin. Similarly, those who claim redemption through Christ's blood must also submit themselves to regular inward washing of his word as we commit ourselves to reading our Bibles daily. Now, that we've considered this process of cleansing through God's Word, the removal of the debris of our sin, let's go further now and speak specifically concerning sanctification. Let's actually consider the word itself for just a second. Sanctification, like other English words ending in 
sanctification, like clarification, rectification, purification, that suggests within itself some process is going to take place. When you're clarifying, you're making things clear. When you're purifying, you're making things pure. Now consider the first part of that word, sanctification. That word, sancta, is closely related to the word that we use for saint, which can be translated into another word that we speak of quite a bit, which is holy. So sanctification is that process of making us saintly or making us holy. And the New Testament mentions five distinct things that are a connection with sanctification. And they are these. The Spirit of God, the Word of God, something that the Bible refers to as the altar, the blood of Christ, and our faith. I just want to quickly explain the work of God in each and every one of these areas as applies to our lives. It says this in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13, as Paul speaks about the Spirit of God. As for us, we can't help but thank God for you, dear brothers and sisters loved by the Lord. We are always thankful that God chose you to be among the first to experience salvation, a salvation that came through the Spirit who makes you holy and through your belief in the truth. Peter says it this way in 1 Peter, God the Father knew you and chose you long ago, and His Spirit has made you holy. As a result, you have obeyed Him and have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. May God give you more and more grace and peace. Both Peter and Paul acknowledge the sanctification of or by the Holy Spirit as an element of the Christian experience. Sanctification through the Word of God was also referred to by Christ Himself when He prayed to God the Father for His disciples, which include me and you, when He says this in John chapter 17. Make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is true. Christ also mentions sanctification through what we refer to as the altar. An altar is something that a sacrifice is placed upon, and it was used extensively before Christ died on the cross for us. The cross being the altar God used to sacrifice Christ for us. Jesus said this to a group of religious leaders called Pharisees, recorded in Matthew chapter 23. How blind! For which is more important, the gift on the altar or the altar that makes the gift sacred? Another word for sacred is sanctified or holy. Here Jesus was endorsing a practice that was taught in the Old Testament, that a gift would be offered in sacrifice to God, that would be sanctified, would be made holy by placing it upon God's altar. Well, in the, the New Testament, as we are in today, this New Testament time, the Bible teaches us that the nature of the gift and the altar has changed, but the principle remains the same. It is the altar that sanctifies the gift. Sanctification through the blood of Jesus is referred to in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 29. Here the author considers the case of a person who has known the blessings of salvation, but has deliberately and openly rejected Jesus as Savior. Concerning such a person, the author makes this comment. Just think how much worse the punishment will be for those who have trampled on the Son of God and have treated the blood of the covenant which made us holy as if it were common and unholy and have insulted and disdained the Holy Spirit who brings God's mercy to us. This passage shows that a true believer who continues in the faith is sanctified by the blood of this new covenant. Again, that is Christ's own blood. In Jesus' own words in Acts 26, verse 18, he says this, To open their eyes so they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. Then they will receive forgiveness for their sins and will be given a place among God's people who are set apart by faith in me. You are sanctified, set apart through faith in Christ. So to sum up, to sum up these five great agencies, these means through which we are sanctified according to Scripture in the New Testament, it is this, the Holy Spirit, you are sanctified by the truth of God's Word, you are sanctified by the altar of sacrifice that is the cross, you are 
sanctified by the blood of Christ, and you are sanctified by faith in Jesus. It is the Holy Spirit who initiates the work of sanctification in the heart and minds of each person for whom God has chosen for his eternal purposes. It is through the truth of God's word that the Holy Spirit speaks, revealing to us the altar of sacrifice that is drawing us to live a life of surrender, our lives being a living sacrifice to God. It is upon this altar that we are sanctified by the cleansing and purifying power of Christ's blood. And all of this is given to those who believe, those who have faith in Christ Jesus. As it says in Matthew chapter 8, verse 13, because you believed, it has happened. We embrace this process of being made into a new creation and being made holy as we embrace God's Word, as it cleanses us, removing debris, the debris of sin in our lives, and sanctifies us, purifying our lives from the effects of sin, we are made holy. The Bible has been given to us to teach us about the holiness of God. Holiness is a part of God's very nature, and He has desired to make us that way because we are made in His image. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13 to 16, it says this, So prepare your minds for action and exercise self-control. Put your hope in the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. So you must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. You didn't know any better. But now you must be holy in everything you do, just as God who chose you is holy. For the scriptures say, you must be holy because I am holy. Sanctification, being made holy, is by faith. But that faith is not a passive faith. The faith that truly sanctifies consists of a continual active reading and applying the promises of God found in his word. It is for this reason that Jesus prayed for us, saying to our heavenly Father, Make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. So as you read God's word, as you are obedient to what it says to do in faith, know that you are being made holy. God's word is the great purifier of every believer's life. Read it, believe it, and apply it today.